Ruth Ann uh, began writing from what I understand about the time that her son was born. She picked up the guitar again and started writing some songs and, and thinking about playing them out. It was uh, just the other evening that I saw her performing one of her original songs accompanied by her son, who's now a freshman in high school, on uh, his guitar, uh, which was uh, beautiful to see and hear. But Ruthann did not stop there. In 2000, 2007, she was thinking beyond her own getting back to music and she wanted to uh, include, do more for a community uh, related to music and the arts. And she decided to get started with her organization known as Strike Accord. And at that time, she was hearing the urgent need for the funding of weekly care packages to be sent out to local troops serving overseas. And she decided she wanted to get involved in raising money. And for that first venture of hers, the Benefit concert raised nearly $3,000, and she decided that was good and kept going forward and uh, has been raising money for a lot of important causes in our uh, state, our local area, in including uh, the home, New England Home for Little Wanderers, Schools on Wheels, Rosie's Place most recently, and also Art Because Breast Cancer Foundation and uh, Ellie Anbinder, who's uh, the founder of that organization, is in the house, and we just had um, some pictures from the calendars of that uh, yesterday. To date, Strike Accord has earned more than $20,000 for these different concerts that Ruth Ann has hosted, and the concerts themselves um, are also important by Ruth Ann thinking and Im inviting the talents of our local area, uh, who are singer-songwriters, who are uh, spoken word artists and poets as well. And uh, to get as many as possible uh, lined up, performing, doing what they love to do, performing their art, and in inviting the community out to here and raising money through donations for this. And her last event at Rosie's Place, there were 30 women on a six-hour uh, lineup. And I uh, had the honor of being MC along with Ellen Schmidt for six hours, and it was totally fun, every minute of it, and uh, such talent of all of the women. So that's the story of Ruth Ann Baylor and what she is doing out there in the community. And I have a quote for her. Ruth Ann Baylor is a starter. Not only does she write beautiful music and lyrics at times poignant and others haunting, she touches the souls of many people outside our musical community through her strike accord concerts for charity. She is an activist, an organizer, and believer in finding the intersection of art, music, giving, and healing. And yet Ruthann has been known to say it's not about me, and it takes a community to make her concerts a success. That may be true, but she inspires that community, and she's an inspiration to me as well. And that's a mystery quote, but I know there are many who feel that way. So with that said, I'd like to invite you to join me in giving a big round of applause for Ruth Ann Baylor. The first song I'm going to sing, uh, because it's National Poetry Month, um, a lot of the songs that I write are inspired and based on poetry and words of other people. And I'm going to start with um, a song called Infinite Blue. And um, <clears throat> back in November, my good friend Suzanne Fredette, who is here, who's a poet and an artist, amazing artist, she sent me this poem that she wrote while spending the day alone on the beach. And it was her birthday. And she sent me the poem, and the imagery was so powerful and moving that I know my, my songwriter friends are here today, Kim and John and Andrew, and I know that sometimes we feel like the songs just write themselves. And for this song, I really felt like when I saw Suzanne's words, the song wrote, wrote itself. And so um, it's called Infinite Blue. Silver clouds on a November 
Winter and waiting as the tide slips away. We're walking with my ocean, she listens to me. With her waves unfolding, arms opening to me. And I'm another year older, but closer to the child anew. From the ocean to the mountain, this is a tribute to where I grew up in upstate New York, and it is about a mountain where I used to go and bring my guitar and um, reflect and write music.
go, seasons come and go. Oh. Looking for answers I never found Until I return here to find the truth And I saw my shadow dressed in jewels And whenever I will close my eyes I will be right here from the mountains to the city. Um, I'd like to invite Andrew Green up to the stage. <coughs> this is a, uh, another song based on a poem written by my friend Lawrence Johnson, who grew up in Harlem. And the song is about um, going back on a quiet Sunday morning and revisiting the city he had been away for for so long. It's called Sunday Morning Harlem. <clears throat> Sunday morning, Sunday in the city Sunday morning, Sunday in the city Sunday morning, Sunday in the city Harlem still and oh so lovely As the dawn is turning into the light The ecstasy is gone from Saturday night The impassioned dark has forgotten its reasons why from the mist she bids the sun to rise She stretches out and shakes her head Tossing around her dusty dress Just like a queen she strikes a pose A Harlem rose Sunday morning, Sunday in the city Sunday morning, Sunday in the city Sunday morning, Sunday in the city Harlem still and oh so lovely Noble in her warm but glorious man Moving through her faded renaissance path Forgotten promise Overlooks her kingdom by the sea 
She's feeling old, her prince is late. She lets her attitude slip away. Her royal heart is scarred with tears from all those years. Romance walks alone on a morn part. Forsaken spirits whisper inside the dark. Let herself drift far, so far away. She doesn't see he's come to save the day. She lifts her eyes to where he stands. He gently takes her royal hand. They watch the sun appear and rise. Sunday in the city, Sunday morning, Sunday in the city, Sunday morning, Sunday in the city. I'm the queen of the city, the queen of the city. I see a renaissance of hope before me. I'm the talk of the talk, the flame in the dark. I light the candles with my silver spark. A once forgotten jewel, I now shine bright. I'm gonna keep illuminating all my light. I'm gonna shine on Harlem, shine on Harlem, shine on. We shine on, we shine on, we shine on. I wanna go there, who I won't climb Now I don't know by no law, don't see no crime Ain't got no reason, man, who I ain't got no rest Wanna get down to the woman and get undressed Who I can't stand it now, who I can't stand it I can't wait to see them walls fall down I can't stand it, no, who I can't stand it. I can't wait to see them walls fall down. I tell me, Jesus, who, why do they run? Is it by the way of the woman, who the way to the gun? Got 15 minutes, now I just don't care. I'm gonna take this all for granted when I get there. Oh, I can't stand it, no, who I can't stand it. I can't wait to see them walls fall down. I can't stand it, no, who I can't stand it. I can't wait to see them walls fall down. Tomorrow, who will Sunday rhyme? You know, our good things will come in their own time. Put the ball pin hammer, man, right through your damn door. Now, don't pretend to understand no more. Oh, I can't stand it now. Who I can't stand it. I can't wait to see them walls fall down. 
I can't stand it now. Who I can't stand it. I can't wait to see them, wait to see them, wait to see them, wait to see them, wait to see them walls fall down. War cry. He told them he was suffering too much pain, could no longer separate wrong from right. What if his mind exploded if he went insane? Prayed to be relieved, what might they gain if they redeployed him with impaired sight? He told them he was feeling too much pain, piecing together shattered friends in vain. Black blood sticking on bones, knife bright in desert explosions. This war is insane. Witness to bodies charred, children slain. His cries remained stifled by official might after he warned them of his abysmal pain. He saw everyone as Abel, felt like Cain. What consequence if he continued to fight? His mind would explode, he would go insane. Military heads examined his brain, dissected his soul, extinguished the light. They returned his rifle, denied his pain, triggered his explosion, another death insane. Uh, this is a poem uh, in the tradition of giving instructions to people. And this is called How to Find a Wolf. First go out into the woods, best if there is not a path. No path is needed for the wolf to find you. A wolf likes that, that you don't need a path, that you're willing to enter its world without any bearings. You willing to find it, all willingness to be found, wolves love that. But don't take anything with you, that, might get, that may get you lost. And don't ever take a wolf for granted, they have their ways. But if you really want to find a wolf, hell, go naked. All the better to find what you're looking for. The wolf, I mean, or whatever it is, wherever it is you are going, whatever it is you are really trying to find. So. It's a lovely, lovely poem by Marjorie Swenson. We feel it, we know that it's come here at last. Mother Nature prods sleeping ones come resting times past so with half opened eyes they push up to where avid gardeners prepare to welcome them there while we gaze with wonder as tiny green leaves explode like a mist to shower the trees what magic is there god gives us to share year after year after year they are there our thanks we can show is it just takes a prayer our thanks we can show is it just takes a prayer thank you
Whether it's infectious disease, severe weather, or a chemical spill, emergencies that threaten our public health can happen at any time. After the events of 9-11, the federal government established the Medical Reserve Corps to respond to emergencies. Today in the Commonwealth, 45 Corps units recruit and train both medical and non-medical volunteers. In addition, the Department of Public Health's MSAR program, or Massachusetts System for Advanced Registration, credentials and deploys healthcare professionals to respond in such emergencies. Now a new effort is underway to enhance emergency response by aligning the activities of both groups. Mass Response is designed to facilitate emergency medical response and promote local partnerships in planning and assistance. And you, health professionals and concerned citizens alike, can be part of this important effort. For more information on Mass Response and how to get involved, visit maresponse.org. I'm Dr. Kathy Phillips. And I'm Dr. Andrew Blum. Epilepsy is the third most common neurological disorder in the United States after Alzheimer's disease and stroke. It affects more than 3 million people, with 200,000 new cases diagnosed each year. The condition is caused by a temporary disturbance in brain function, resulting in various kinds of seizures. These seizures can produce involuntary movements, changes in awareness, altered behavior, or loss of consciousness. Epilepsy is a major chronic medical condition and can affect a person's quality of life similar to arthritis, heart disease, diabetes, or cancer. It can limit activity and cause pain, anxiety, or depression. It can also be life-threatening. Because epilepsy can also present non-medical challenges such as discrimination and social stigma, we urge you to learn more about this condition. To find out more about this disorder, including its symptoms, diagnosis, and treatment, visit epilepsyfoundation.org.